and your garden has become a jungle at the beginning of September. All this beautiful basil has provided so much nectar and pollen all season long for so many beneficial insects and pollinators. From late summer into the fall, we are so busy preserving the harvest from our garden and from our animals this year. We have harvested quite a few um, over the last couple of weeks. And we're so busy that we don't have time to take care of this jungle of a garden. So we are going to harvest this entire bed of basil and dry it for future use. Look at that corn. The kids planted that corn. So the funny thing is, is I cannot get through to that side of the garden from this side now because it's so overgrown. I did cut a path through here and then I moved some of those uh, winter squash vines that were climbing over both of these beds. I rolled them back in. So we're going to let that stay a jungle on that side, but we're going to do some cleanup over here. We've been very blessed with okra from two different neighbors. Miss Elsie has given us some and another neighbor down the road a bit has brought us some okra. So luckily we haven't had to go all summer without eating our favorite vegetable or one of our favorites. This is the okra that I forgot to thin out and the basil just kept on growing into it. But look at y'all, I'm getting, I'm getting blooms and I'm getting okra fruit. So it is just okay. And then this Roselle hibiscus is going to be a delicious tea when it blooms. I'll use the calyx to make a tea. And then this tomato bed right here has some really healthy new growth, despite the fact that there was a lot of blight on the lower leaves that never got pruned off because it just got too hot to be out here. Normally, I would remove all of the dead or dying leaves, anything with spots on it from the lower edges of the tomato plant as the season progresses, but it got so hot out here, I just stopped coming out and doing it. I basically spent most of my time coming out to grab any of the harvest I could and go inside and prep it, and I have been prepping the harvest all summer long. The peppers are a little bit terrifying because they're taller than me. <laughs> and they're starting to fall down. We have tons of black Hungarian fruit. It's starting to hang the whole branch down and it will break it if I leave all that fruit. So I'm gonna have to harvest some of those. This cayenne branch looks a little wilted and damaged because it was on the ground after the last rain and I had to prop it back up and hope it lives. So we have tons of beautiful cayenne peppers to pick and we'll dry those out and this is what i'm talking about where we can't get through our garden because so much basil has <laughs> taken over the paths and then these peppers over here these <laughs> way too spicy they're just too spicy so i don't know I'm gonna have to make some hot sauce with those but they're producing like crazy there are so many ways to harvest and preserve the peppers. We do fermenting, we do dehydrating, freezing, whatever way we know that we will use them in the future is a great way to preserve your peppers for long-term storage. Funny thing is, is the broccoli that we planted too late and then got covered with caterpillar are actually pushing out broccoli florets now, which is, so weird. We planted these in the spring and it's September. They should have been pulled out of the garden, but I didn't because the cucumbers were growing over it. We've had some issues with cucumber mosaic virus from the cucumber beetles. They've just really destroyed our cucumbers this year. We haven't had any cucumbers at all. Kajari melon. Awesome. It's thriving. These miniature watermelon are doing great, but I don't know when they're ready. Um, Uh-oh, that one's got a bug hole. Does that mean I need to pick it? Hmm, the tendril. I think it's probably harder to tell on these than on big watermelon, but I might have to pull a sample. If you've had trouble trying to tell if your watermelon is ripe, 
check out my short video that shows the five ways that I can tell if my watermelon is ripe. The dragon tongue leaves started to succumb to disease or pest, so I decided to leave the beans on the last time I picked and let them go to seed so I can have dragon tongue for next year. So you, many of you who've seen my videos with tomatoes in the past know that I'm very adamant that tomatoes are not supposed to do anything but be a vine. So I'm actually not going to cage these. I'm just going to let them grow along the ground in this bed. They were planted much later than the rest. They haven't fruited yet and they are blooming now. So this will be a nice late summer treat. The kids garden though, guys, this is, this is a success story right here. <laughs> and then this weed I left growing. I'm really glad I did. This is one plant and look at all of those blooms for the pollinators and look at how many varieties of pollinators are on there. I don't know if y'all can see this. It's kind of, kind of awesome. Pretty epic. This is the kind of thing I want to see in my garden. That's a healthy ecosystem. This awesome little hidey hole for the kids. So cool. Got beautiful sunflowers blooming and the ears are forming on the corn. It makes me so happy. Odin, what you doing? Are you done swimming? Yeah. Are you going to go in there? Yeah. The sand's going to stick to you because you're all wet. But that's okay. You can go back in the pool and rinse it off. <laughs> you want to go in? Yeah. It's like your little secret hideaway. <laughs> and then the success of the of the season has definitely been how well the watermelon grows. It's fine. <laughs> we have picked two of the watermelon so far. This third one right here is probably ready too. And they are so yummy. Oh, all right, I take it back. We have one very strangely growing <laughs> cucumber so far. So we just recently planted these ones and they're doing much better than the ones we planted earlier in the season. It is time to get all of these seeds in the ground so that we can have another fall bounty so that we can be harvesting all winter long. All right, so this being my carrot bed, I've already pre-moistened it. Carrot seeds don't ever wanna dry out and we are still really hot here in Georgia, but it is still time to plant our cold weather friends. So they'll germinate okay with this heat as long as they are kept moist and then you see a surface coating that's that's azomite it is a wonderful material for the garden it's volcanic ash Ryan and I call it plant crack because it makes everything grow bigger and better but it's really helpful for root crops especially I have found so I like to definitely put some of that azomite right on the beds. I've also added an organic pellet fertilizer. I'm going to stir it in to the top layer and start sowing my carrot seeds. So we like to supplement seasonally. So if we pull something out that's eating up all the nutrients, we got to add something else to replenish some of the nutrients. This compost has a lot of nutrients still in it but it's definitely needing just a touch more of a balanced, all-purpose plant food. Organic, of course. So we're doing pretty much a rainbow of carrots. Pretty much every different kind you can think of. Cosmic purple, atomic red, black nebula, chantenny red core mostly mary's heirloom seed i have some old seed packets in my pocket from various places that i'm gonna seed as well but 
majority of it will be Mary's heirloom seed and I'll leave a link for you to her seed catalog down below. All right, we got quite a variety. Don't pay any attention to how much I overseeded them. There is carrot seeds sprinkled in each of the crevices and there are radish seeds also. I do the radish, not because radish are my favorite thing to grow, but because they make good row markers. They come up fast and they grow fast and they'll help me thin out the carrots if all of the carrots germinate. But these are older seed from 2018 and 19, so I really wanted to use them up and hopefully they all germinate just fine and I just have to thin them out. But if they don't, I'll come back and overseed. So something that's really important to note about carrot seeds, I'm not burying these. Yes, I did dig a trench. I did that primarily to help retain the moisture around the seed. Carrot seeds are surface sown. They like to have a little bit of light to germinate. So the only burying that these seeds will see is going to be by when I water them in. When I water them in, a lot of them will get buried but not by much. And that seems to be the perfect ratio where I get the best germination. And so the seeds that are on the surface and never get buried don't always germinate great because they get dried out a little bit. And sometimes it's the ones that are just below the surface that do the best. I do tend to water it very gently with a mist setting so that not too much soil will cover too many of the seeds. Just a few. There's something so satisfying about direct sowing seeds. The way you anticipate them germinating and watching them grow from a baby little seed all the way up into a harvestable plant. It's like we're sowing seeds for the future.